Okay folks, sunny day, uh, 11 degrees to 22 degrees today, even though it felt more like 8 degrees this morning, a bit cold, I had the heater on, it was cold in this unit of mine, so yeah, Let's see how we go with this, if we can make this one come up a treat. going to look at that later. I think it's more than 200% on the vertical. We'll see how we go with that. Or maybe we'll start setting it up. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why we're just going with my intuition, folks. Yeah, this is another thing that I hate. That's the thing, folks. Um, let's see how we go with this. I'll just show, tell you what I'm talking about once I've got it on the, got it with me in the moment. Um, Wondering if we're going to add a background colour. We're going to leave it. Uh, let's see what we've got. It is an art exhibition flyer. Persistence of vision. I really find this is really snooty stuff. Like, you know, you get this real, like you get to um, have all these openings and all this shit. And then you got you can talk to your pub to the public if you're the artist. And I really hate that. I... I've never had the opportunity of of um, having an exhibition of my own or any kind of exhibition except partaking in mostly amateur art contests, thinking that I wasn't worthy as an artist, wasn't able to crack it big in the art world. I had a re I've always had a low self-esteem about my art. When I compare myself with other artists, I feel like an inferiority complex so deep and ingrained. I don't feel I can make friends with other artists. I don't feel like I can convince art curators that my work is worth uh, exhibiting. That it's, it's just, I, I guess I got frightened of the competition, folks. Thinking there's too many artists out there trying to do the same thing and I just didn't feel that art was a, you know, a career. I didn't feel like it was a career. I, want, I wanted to be I wanted to work with, as I since I was a thirteen-year-old in, in when I was in, oh, I got to enlarge it bigger. When I was in, um, larger, smaller, uh, but when I was li when I was in um, year in um, year eight, and I was a thirteen-year-old, I wanted to become a uh, photocopier technician, and I figured that the technician job you're more likely to make money out of it than you are taking a punt in the not so easy to deal with art world which is really full of lots of competition and stuff and I'm just going to overlap it and I just thought the comp I just got too scared of the with the concept of oh there's too many people you know too many people competing and the thing was I just dug my own fucking grave folks by by doing that I had the opportunity when I was back in 1992, there was this man called Luigi who also loved me and he could see something in me that I couldn't see in myself. And basically I see, I, I saw, I hated myself, folks. And I got teased and bullied at school throughout my entire school life and into most of my adult life as well. So I didn't care about myself. I hated myself. People, there were people, even though I got teased and bullied probably by 92% of the school, of the high school, uh, there were some people who actually believed in me. And one person, strangely enough, or maybe there was a couple, told me of, of this art of mine when I was still only 13, the same year I wanted to be a 
technician, that's when I got really into the photocopier scene of things. Well, she reckoned I was, or she, I was going to become famous. And, I, and all I could, and I just crushed what she said without, I don't know if I said it out loud or whether it was in my head, but I said, famous for what? Being an idiot? Yeah, you because know, I was teased and bullied and I thought I must have been an idiot to deserve that kind of fucking treatment. So I basically said, famous for what? Being an idiot. So in my head, I think it was. Uh, so basically, I just didn't have, uh, my self-esteem was already sabotaged as early as that. I hated myself. I thought it must have been my problem that I was getting the treatment that I got. And also, the um, church community, when I started going to church, uh, fellowship, um, or fellowship then church, uh, I started to become feel inferior there because I felt they didn't like me either. They may not have been as vicious as the people at school, but they were still, they still had a, a, an influence on me and got into my headspace as well. I call them the schoolies and the churchies, uh, troublemakers who sabotage, who contributed to my sabotage, and that's why I'm now considering I've got, a, I've got, I'm disabled and I have undiagnosed disabilities, and one disability that's been diagnosed, but the diagnosed disability I can't disclose because I don't. It contains. It's a very stigmatic condition and I don't feel it's time for me to expose the stigma uh, the, um, you'll probably find out down the track but basically people just ground me into the dirt they just ground me and grounded me and, and punched it's like they pile drived me into the dirt until I could until my head was sticking out of the sand and I couldn't do anything to change my circumstances so I'm trying to get on the 6 o'clock news uh, on Channel 9, but they always seem to play artists that have been established. They don't want to play my material, which really hurts my feelings because I put such so much work into this shit. Trying to get it on... I burn, I'm, I'm currently getting my computer fixed because my DVD-RW drive has failed, and that's going to cost me a little bit, and I'm not rich. I, I'm on the disability support pension... So I don't have much money to throw around, and I, and basically, yeah, it's really difficult um, trying to make ends meet. But I'm gonna, I'm determined, folks. I'm not gonna give up. Anyway, that's the um, artwork reimagined. I'm just gonna give you a fly around my unit to show you how things are currently. So this is me in the mirror, as you can see. This is just, I'm just gonna show you my messy bedroom and my, this is where all my action happens there. And this is the windows, the view out the windows. Here is center stage. Um, some work there picked off the street. Uh, so we're just flying around the unit, which is where I live, a social housing unit. I'm grateful to social housing that I've got this and I'm grateful to Centrelink for my pension, disability support pension. This is my bar fridge. This is all I can kind of fit in in there. I can't fit anything else in. So it gets a bit difficult living on a tight budget. This is the front door and all that sort of shit. And this is what really upsets me is the fact that my art lives in boxes instead of hanging on art gallery walls. And this is the stuff I've been making my TV campaign for so long. And I'll just show you inside. There's some more artwork. And I can't show you so much artwork, but you won't be seeing all of it, just some of it, just the tip, of, just the majority of it. These are my DVDs that I've been burning for Channel 9. And these are ones that have to be done. Uh, and I've got another, got another silo of discs on the table. As you can see, there's no computer. My computer's been put in for service, so there's a big gap there. <laughs> I'm hoping to pick it up tomorrow. Anyway, let's just get on a lighter note. This is my favourite toilet paper. I hate quilting. I hate sorbent. I like this thin stuff, and this lasts a long time. It's not the greatest on your bum if you're really sensitive, 
but you don't have to buy them in multi-packs you buy them separately and you just stack them anywhere because i have very little space to stack multi-pack toilet paper like quilted and here we go this is my view out there um this is where i'm hoping my stuff will end up i'm also rationing my power use so i'm using a usb powered lantern that was the money was given to me and I've got torches as well. I'm also rationing my showers, one shower a week um, and one hair wash a fortnight. So yeah, this is it. Oh, we nearly forgot the hallowed turf of the bathroom. Okay, the bathroom or the shower in this case. So this is where I, I get cold in this. Sometimes I feel really cold in this bathroom. I wish I could afford a heater and have a heater and that shit and this place has a share laundry, which I would rather not use. And this is where I dump my clothing. So I go, I take my stuff to the local laundromat. And that's another expense I have to deal with. And really, it's expensive, folks. And so Channel 9, you can see the conditions. You heard me talking about my rationing so I can afford to run the heater. That's why I was running a heater. I'm still running it through the tail end of winter. And hopefully things will work out and hopefully you'll put my stuff on air instead of giving it the bum steer just because I'm not famous yet. I can't go anywhere. I don't even have a curriculum vitae or a CV to prove that I've exhibited. I need a, I need a kickstart, not a kick in the ass, as in a, a, a hatred thing. A kickstart to help get me going, to get me self-sufficient and I don't have to rely on Centrelink and, and be on the taxpayer's purse. And I really want to just prove, I just want to show the world what I'm capable of, not what I can't do, but what I can do as a person living with disability. I had a cord around my neck and I came out breech, um, which means I had brain damage, which means I couldn't do school properly. I wasn't able, not only was I, I was academically tr troubled and also I had teasing and bullying and I believe I had have high functioning autism, which teasing and bullying would have been about and if I had have had these conditions diagnosed I probably wouldn't be here I'd probably be doing something um, better but I there was no diagnosis for high functioning autism but the uh, schools should have diagnosed the intellectual disability and I now have to fucking pick up the pieces and start all over and I'm now 50 and I'm, I missed the best years of my life being a I was I convinced myself I wasn't worthy of Luigi because of these bullies and because of the churches as well as the schoolies. So I really want them to see that they don't rule. I, I give them the middle finger, the bitches that started this shit. Sorry, language, but I do use a lot of colourful language, as you know, Channel 9. So we'll just show you the artwork again, and I think we can call it quits. I think that's enough. Gotta go.